Hi, I'm Farlin Shang. The following is a sample of stories I wrote, edited, and produced at the Columbia Graduate School of Journalism. First, a report on medical malpractice. The American Medical Association is complaining that more people are suing for malpractice than ever before, and the size of jury awards is ballooning. That means doctors have to pay more for insurance, and in the end, patients have to pay more for doctors. The problem has led to a conflict over how much doctors should pay and how much victims should get. It's never going to compensate. They'll never, I don't care if they gave me $20 million, it's never going to make up for my arm. I mean, what is a right shoulder go for these days? Is there a price tag on it? No. Noelle Samuels of Malvern, Long Island, checked into Long Beach Hospital nearly seven years ago. She was there to have a benign growth removed from her neck. She returned without the use of her right arm and shoulder. And for the next eight months, she had to wear this cast day and night. The surgeon had apparently dug in too deep, clipping Samuel's spinal nerve. Samuel's a wife, mother of two, and former nurse, was never told of the risk by her 38-year-old surgeon. Samuel sued, and six years later, the insurance company settled. She received more than one million dollars, but she says the pain has not been worth it. When I was going to the pain center at Columbia Presbyterian, I go in several times a week. They'd inject my back with xylocaine. Then they decided to do an autonomic nerve block where they put you under hypnosis. They stick a needle through your neck. You walk out of there, you lose your voice. Your right eye is drooping. If I wanted to get rid of the pain permanently, they'd clip the nerves in my neck. I would lose my right eye. It would close forever. Emotional? Do you know what this did to me, what it did to my family? Two years ago, Noelle Samuels was one of 70 malpractice plaintiffs nationwide who received in excess of $1 million. That's a dramatic rise from 10 years ago when there were only four such cases. That jump was reflected in one AMA study last month showing that Americans are suing more than three times as often for malpractice. To help keep insurance companies in business, New York State last month allowed one company to raise its malpractice premiums 52%. For a brain surgeon on Long Island, that means about $100,000 a year for insurance. Who is to blame? The AMA concedes that incompetent doctors should be weeded out early, but doctors also say they cannot guarantee results. And medical practice is much more complex and much more risky than it used to be. And patients have to realize that uh, the uh, untoward results or bad results and medical injuries are built into the system. And this is a risk that they have to bear. Doctors, as well as their insurance companies, recognize that many claims are legitimate and deserve compensation. But, they say, a lot of claims are not. There's an interesting statistic in New York State in that uh, over half of the medical liability actions brought uh, to court are dismissed as frivolous. So one out of two should have never gotten there in the first place. But even with a frivolous case, the uh, insurer has to spend money to defend it and uh, that costs. Insurance and doctors groups blame the flood of suits on lawyers who often earn 30 to 50 percent of their clients awards. The reformers also want to eliminate jury awards in malpractice cases. Juries they say are overly emotional. Instead they want what they call a more rational body of experts that can weed out frivolous cases and compensate victims directly. Furthermore they believe there should be no awards for emotional distress. Cosmetically, fine. You know, my shoulders might look okay now, but I can't raise this arm. I've lost the motion for swimming. I can't extend my arm. I can't use this hand to eat with anymore. If I wanted a baby, I couldn't have one. I love children. I haven't been able to pick up a baby since this happened. What did it cost me? It seems only fair that patients who have suffered from malpractice deserve compensation. But who should pay and how much? Many competent doctors are now paying for the mistakes of their colleagues. And patients in turn pay their doctors more, as do their insurance companies. It's the price being paid to compensate victims like Noelle Samuels and to handle the rising number of claims. But doctors and insurance reformers say if the soaring costs continue, New York State will lose many of its younger doctors to other states, and many older ones will retire. 
Legislators in Albany this session are expected to consider changes in malpractice law. And already, doctors and insurers groups have one ally. Governor Cuomo has agreed that reforms are necessary to curb the soaring costs of medical care. I'm Farlan Chang for Columbia News. Next, an update on the ongoing saga of the city's huge pack of retired buses, the ones the city has labeled $90,000 lemons. Row upon row of steel, glass, and rubber, $92 million worth. Like a fleet of ghosts, these 850 Grumman buses have been haunting the Brooklyn Army Terminal for the past 15 months. It was back then the city banished them from service after a four-year history of breakdowns, faulty steering, and cracked axles. The city then sued Grumman for delivering bum goods. Grumman countersued, blaming the city for poor maintenance. And while they battle in court, the buses remain idle. Not only are they slowly deteriorating, they're also costing the city $10,000 a month to store. So four months ago, the city offered to sell the buses under two conditions. You could not operate them in the city, and you had to buy 50 or more. Today, the city is negotiating with 40 bidders, both domestic and foreign. They're looking for the buses for different reasons. Some people are looking to operate them. Some people are looking to resell them. Some people are looking to scrap them, to uh, sell them as scrap. The city won't reveal who the bidders are or how much they're bidding for. But in Houston, where a similar ordeal took place, that city got only 3,000 per bus. New York admits buying Grumman was a mistake, one that is now costing taxpayers 90 million plus dollars. But the city insists the safety of passengers is worth the cost. The city claims it's been taken for a ride. Now it hopes that by selling the buses, and perhaps winning the lawsuit, it'll recover some of its losses. I'm Farlan Chang for Columbia News. And finally, Asian communities in New York City. Chinatown has gotten crowded, so now Asians are making a second home for themselves out in Queens. And they're winning critics and supporters alike. This is the Guiducci Project, where apartments and condominiums are being built next to bustling Queens Boulevard in Elmhurst. Similar construction is going on across the street in the Queens Center Plaza. A total of 120 units are being constructed to accommodate a special customer. They are Asian Americans who enjoy the convenience of being near subways, the city, and perhaps most of all, near each other. Fifteen years ago, there were few Chinese in Queens. But as immigration doors opened and Chinatown rents increased, Queens began to catch on. Today, 20,000 Chinese and Koreans live in Elmhurst. The signs of this growth can be seen throughout the neighborhood. Ten-year-old Jerry Wang came to Elmhurst from Taiwan seven years ago. Uh, the school is close and I have a lot of friends over there. And the neighborhood is safe, and I, I could go out to places I like, and other things, like uh, bowling. Jerry is among the growing number of Chinese coming from either Taiwan, Hong Kong, or mainland China, whose families can afford to relocate. This beauty parlor is owned by Suk Yong Sin, a Korean who has lived and worked in Elmhurst for the past four years. I do have a lot of customer, and Korean and Chinese. So that's what I like here, and that's when I can have well, less Oriental custom. What's going on in Elmhurst is not new. Outside of Chinatown, the growth of Chinese Americans is most dramatic in this nearby neighborhood of Flushing. It's often called the second Chinatown, as one can see on streets like Union and Northern. The Chamber of Commerce credits the Asian influx with revitalizing what had been a sagging economy. In the past seven years, the number of Asians here has tripled to nearly 80,000. With housing in demand, property values have shot up 300 percent. I feel a note from our ancestors who came here many years ago and didn't know the language, but these people came here, they white card. They work seven days a week, 14 hours a day. They educate their children, 
and they became the citizens. And the people that we have today are no different from those people. There is 100% occupancy here, and many low-income and welfare tenants have been displaced. Felicia Harris, who has lived here all her life, does not like it. When the rest of your people come, where's everybody that was here before you going to live? When you're building condominiums and everything and putting your stores all over the place, where are we supposed to go? What are we supposed to do? We can't afford your rent. I could, but I mean, there's other people that's out here that's pouring on the welfare. They can't afford it. What are we supposed to do then? Meanwhile, Asian demand for housing in Flushing keeps growing. In fact, the number of Asian realtors has grown from 4 to 20 in the last five years alone. That has prompted Flushing developers to head out to Elmhurst to build on what vacant space is left. The new housing is slightly less expensive than in Flushing. For example, the new one and two bedroom units will go from 130,000 and up. Many brokers, builders, and Asians predict that Elmhurst may eventually become the next Flushing. Those residents who can no longer afford the steadily rising rents wonder and worry if they'll be able to survive here. But at the same time, homeowners and business leaders welcome the Asian influx. I'm Farlin Chang for Columbia News. neck. She returned without the use of her right arm and shoulder, and for the next eight months she had to wear this cast day and night. The surgeon had apparently dug in too deep, clipping Samuel's spinal nerve. Samuel's a wife, mother of two, and former nurse, was never told of the risk by her 38-year-old four, and the size of jury awards is ballooning. That means doctors have to pay more for insurance, and in the end, patients have to pay more for doctors. The problem has led to a conflict over how much doctors should pay and how much victims should get. It's never going to compensate. They'll never, I don't care if they gave me $20 million, it's never going to make up for my arm. I mean, what is a right shoulder go for these days? Is there a price tag on it? No. Noelle Samuels of Malvern, Long Island, checked into Long Beach Hospital nearly seven years ago. She was there to have a benign growth removed from her surgeon. Samuel sued, and six years later, the insurance company settled. She received more than $1 million, but she says the pain has not been worth it. When I was going to the pain center at Columbia Presbyterian, I go in several times a week. They'd inject my back. Hi, I'm Farlin Chang. The following is a sample of stories I wrote, edited, and produced at the Columbia Graduate School of Journalism. First, a report on medical malpractice. The American Medical Association is complaining that more people are suing for malpractice than ever before.